Real Couture and Sunny Nice Artist of Excellence in Mexico. And I'm super excited because today we will be working on a wonderful Halloween cookie tutorial that we really, really enjoyed preparing for you. And we will be using the best fondant in the world, Sunny Nice. So come and join us in this creepy adventure. And before we start, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we're constantly uploading content of recipes, cookie and cake decorating videos and it doesn't matter if you're not a Spanish speaker, don't worry, they're very visually appealing and very visually easily for you to understand. And remember that you can also leave us any comments and we'll be very very happy to reply to you. So we send you a big hug and let's get started with these Halloween treats. So let's get started. For this tutorial, we'll be mainly using satin ice fondant, some pale purple and purple color. We'll also need two coffin shaped cookies and a pre baked vampire cookie. We will also need a liner brush, a shell knife tool, a dresden tool, some yellow fondant, a little bit of white fondant, red fondant, a tiny bit of pink fondant some navy blue fondant, shimmery silver fondant, black fondant, some purple petal dust, some gold highlighter, a small ball tool, an exacto knife, a rolling pin, and we're ready to start. We will start rolling out a small portion of purple satin ice fondant with our rolling pin. Remember to add some cornstarch to the mat where you roll this fondant so it doesn't stick. We will then press a diamond shaped texture mat to the fresh fondant and with our dressing tool we will help define the shape and creases. I use the mat as a guideline to avoid crooked lines. Now it's time to cut the coffin shape. For this I am using a paper coffin silhouette but remember that you can find these cookie cutters available in our online shop. Keep in mind it should be big enough so this scary mini Dracula can fit inside of it. If you struggle trying to keep the shape in the corners due to the exacto knife, remember that you can always use a pizza wheel for this. For the next step, I will be adding some edible glue to my cookie. This is made out of water and a small amount of tylos, so we can work with a dense yet watery consistency. I will add just a little bit so my cookie doesn't go too soft because of the moisture. If you want, you could also use as a glue a little bit of ganache or corn syrup. Now I will take my pre-cut coffin shape and will carefully place it on top of the cookie, making sure to keep the perfect shape. I'm going to place it right in the middle and with my finger I will make sure it is perfectly aligned just like this. Wonderful! If you think you missed some of the diamond indentations, you can come back with your dressing tool to remark it very carefully. Remember that we want to achieve a fluffy looking texture. You don't want to make mini Dracula angry because his coffin is not comfortable. <laughs> Now, with the tip of my dressing tool, I'll be marking these indentations in every cross line to make it look more puffy, just like this. Be careful of not going all the way through to the cookie. Yay! Once you have it, it is time to add just a tiny dot of piping gel to every cross line, so you can place a non-pareil and place it in every intersection. For this I am using these tweezers because I love how tiny dry jays look in cookies, but feel free to use bigger dry jays if you like. Sometimes it is difficult to place them with precision, but it is worth the struggle. To finish my coffin cover, I will glue semi-dried black fondant stripes on the sides of the cookie, just like this. I let them pre-dry a bit so it would be easier for me to keep this nice and straight shape. For the bottom part, I'm going to repeat all the process again with black fondant without the texture mat. I'll make sure my fondant is perfectly placed over the cookie with my finger so I can go ahead to the next step. It is time to add some edible glue all over the edge of my coffin bottom, 
We need to do this step very carefully so we can cover it easily with the next step. Now I roll some purple fondant into a warm looking shape and I will glue it to the edge of my cookie, just like this. Try to keep the sharp corners as nice as possible, pinching it with your fingers once it is placed, like this. It is time to give it some texture. I love using the shell shape tool to press and mark fondant. It may look too simple, but I really find it's a nice yet fun decorative accent to frame decorations, don't you think? I am pressing the purple fondant carefully with a tool like this. Remember you can also try this texture in the border of tiered cakes. Once we have it, let's just double check the border lines look nice and straight with a knife part of this tool on the outside and on the inside of the cookie, just like this. And now it's time to bring Mini Dracula to life. Let's start painting the background of the mouth using black edible paint with a brush. Remember that you can go to our online shop to find this template for free. Just click on the link that appears on screen and search for Dracula. For the face, I printed the image and pre-cut every section to use it as a template to cut my fondant very carefully. For these, I use a pastel purple. I will add some edible glue to the back of the face, like this, and will place it making sure the black section goes exactly where the mouth is. Don't worry if it goes a little off, you can always come back and paint the section if it's not completely covered in black. Now it's time to remove the paper very carefully. As you can see, I marked where the eyes of Mini Dracula will be. Let's mark his ears with our dressing tool and indent softly with a small ball tool the markings for the eyes while the fondant is still fresh. Now it's time to place his perfectly styled hair. Just like we did with the face, we will be using the printed images as a template and I will be keeping it with the paper so it doesn't lose its shape. Let's add some hair texture and this mini Dracula is looking sharp! Now let's suit him up! I will pre-cut and glue every little piece of his suit as you can see on screen. Think of it as if you were assembling a puzzle. One little tip, to keep your fondant slightly glued to the paper, use just a small amount of shortening on the paper before you cut the piece. It will let you cut the fondant easily and to keep the paper on the fondant so it doesn't miss its shape. I really love making these collage style cookies. I find it to be very cute and you don't need to be an expert or a professional to achieve amazing finishings on your cookies. Let's say this is a great way to make your cookies look amazing with all the royalizing drama. <laughs> I know, I've been there, I'm telling you. Also, I'd love to recommend you that if you feel that the fondant gets very hard in the cookie once it's dried, you can always add a bit of liquid glycerin to delay the drying process and keep the fondant softer for a longer time, or simply use the wonderful chocopan modeling chocolate. Let's place his tiny pants. Look at those cuties! <laughs> I know this may sound a bit repetitive, but I needed to show you these tiny pants. They're so cute! I will use purple petal dust for the cheeks using a round soft brush for applying it in circular motions to create a beautiful roundish cheeks, just like this.
Then I will add some piping gel to the eye socket and place a small pearl of black fondant on each hole. For the tongue, I will be using a tiny warm shape of pink fondant. And for the fangs, I shaped a tiny teardrop, then I cut the round side flat and I glue it to his mouth. You can actually curl the pointy side a little bit so it doesn't look stiff. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial as much as we did making it for you. And please feel free to share this video on social media. We would be super excited to see many of you guys creating this spooky mini Draculas. For the final touches, I will use this mini bow mold, I add some cornstarch to it and then I will take a small piece of yellow satin ice fondant to press it firmly inside, making sure to get rid of the excess out with my finger. Clean the edges pressing the fondant like this, I bend the mold to remove the fondant of the edges of the mold and I flip the mold over and bend it again until the bow pops out. Easy. Let's paint this bow with gold highlighter powder. I use lemon extract as a medium to mix the highlighter powder because the gold shines more and stays on the fondant for a longer time. Just a little bit of powder, a few drops of lemon extract, we mix it and it's ready to paint. Before you place the bow, make sure it is completely dried and we will glue it using piping gel. And we almost forgot to glue his cute nose. We add some piping gel and there you go, he is alive! We're almost ready guys. I will only add a tiny bat to finish my coffin cover and my cookies are ready to be assembled. Wow! And our little cute vampire is alive! Thank you so much for watching this video and tutorial and we really hope that you give it a try. Remember to tag us and also to follow us at Vanille Couture and also to all the wonderful Saturday Nights family. Thank you for watching once again and have a spooky Halloween!